Please contact Christian Answers for free information on numerous subjects, important subjects, such as the biblical doctrine of the Godhead, the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Free newsletters are available on the heretical position held by many unbiblical cults, such as Jehovah's Witnesses and the Oneness Pentecostals who deny the Trinity. Free newsletters are available on strange groups, such as the King James Onlyites. To receive your free information, please call 512-218-8022 or email us at cdebater at AOL.com. To see full-length videos on these and other subjects, go to Yahoo Video, type Larry Wessels into the search box, and click on the icon for I Shoot Video or I Shoot Video 2. All right, Larry Wessels will now make his fourth speech. All right, thank you, Bob. Well, uh, in my final affirmation of that Jesus actually died for all true believers who ever lived, and he didn't die at all for non-believers. There was no substitutionary atonement made for them whatsoever. And God didn't even make provisions. In fact, we've already talked about the doctrines of reprobation, God turning them over to a reprobate mind. Uh, people are born in different places. Uh, there's places where men never even heard of the gospel. Romans chapter 1 handles that. Now, he's just to quickly mention some of the stuff he talked about, uh, answering that question about uh, uh, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Well, Romans 8 tells you, and Steve mentioned it, nothing can separate us from the love of God, which proves that John 3.16, for God so loved the world, cannot mean what he's trying to make it mean. Because if God really loved everybody the way he's talking about in John in Romans chapter 8, verses 38 and 39, then there's nothing that could separate that love from all these people that have ever lived. They would all have to be saved by the love of God. So, uh, therefore, based on Steve's own answer, in correlation with John 3.16, uh, his interpretation can't possibly work. Okay, and then uh, on the other thing, he's totally forgetting... Uh, in his other analysis there about uh, Mark chapter 4 about why Jesus speaks in parables. He's, kind of when I was mentioning uh, Matthew chapter 11, uh, come unto me all you who are heavy laden. He's talking to true believers that uh, may have that interest in him because the mysteries of God are given to those who God wants them to know about. And we already covered that in Mark chapter 4 verses 11 and following where Jesus said all these things are spoken in parables. The rest, so they won't be forgiven, so they won't see. So you've got to take all this in context. You just can't take a verse here and forget that these other ones exist or election or any of that stuff. And then uh, he mentioned John 6 and that stuff about uh, uh, therefore and, and all this, this stuff. The reason they're unbelievers is because they weren't given by the Father. <laughs> to Jesus, and that's what the verse says. They're not believing because it wasn't given unto them to be believers. The Father did not give these unbelievers to Jesus, and that's why they were unbelievers. That's all the text is saying. I don't know where he's getting this interpretation about anything. But now getting back to this uh, doctrine of limited atonement, it goes back to the foreknowledge of God. God seeing and having a personal relationship in a, in the sense of not in a fatalistic way as the Muslims would believe, but in the Christian manner of a relationship where God, like I mentioned before in Jeremiah 1.5, uh, God knew Jeremiah before he was even formed in the womb. And uh, we know that uh, David mentioned things like this too in the Psalms. But uh, Jesus, being God, already knows what people will do when he looks through the corridors of time. They will only do evil, you know, and they will choose to go to hell unless God does something. Of course, we, we think of where Jesus said, men love darkness rather than the light. And we go back to John 6 again. John chapter 6, verses 37 through 39, verse 44, 63 through 66. Foreknown comes from the Greek word prognosko. The elect are foreknown, according to Romans chapter 8, verses 29 through 37. Israel was foreknown by God. Romans chapter 11, verse 2. Cross-reference that to Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 5 through 10, where the Israelites were chosen by God because why? 
God loved them. He didn't love all the Egyptians and the Amalekites and the Moabites, the Jebusites, the Gershishites, and all the otherites. Christ is foreknown himself in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 20. Other translations uh, besides King James say the exact word. The King James doesn't say that exactly. But anyway, uh, Jeremiah foreknown by God. I mentioned that just a minute ago. Israel known only. Amos 35. chapter 3, verse 2. This is a personal action of God with specific people and nations. This is not a generalized knowing about something. Matthew 7, 21 through 23 emphasizes this. I never knew you. Key point in all of this is that God knows and you only have faith according to Philippians chapter 1, verse 29 because it's a gift given to you by God. All right, thank you, Larry. David McCaleb of Houston, Texas, will now make his fourth reply to Larry Russell. There's some fine distinctions being made between truth and between lies. And remember that a lie is, a really good lie is always one that has a lot of truth mixed in with it. So be good Bereans, as Paul said, and search the scriptures to see whether these things are so. Um, you know, I... Uh, like I said, I, I myself uh, uh, believed these doctrines of Calvinism many, many years ago, and, um, and I, will, I will readily admit that there are many scriptures that sound, that appear, that seem to say that uh, there are some chosen people and there are people that, uh, are, that were chosen in, you know, in eternity past. But you know, the scripture says that there is a way that seemeth right unto a man. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death and uh, you know things can seem right and sound right to you all the t all day long but the end of that way is the way of death according to scripture especially if what you are believing is related to the gospel of Jesus Christ and my friends this whole issue of the limited atonement of, of Christ is related to the gospel I'm bringing it full circle here I started this debate saying that uh, and pointing out that 1 Corinthians 15 says that Christ died for our sins. And I want to emphasize to you that if you are wrong on the definition of who our is referring to, then you are wrong on the gospel. Paul said it was first of all. This was most important. It was first of all that Christ died for our sins. Again, if Larry is wrong, if Bob is wrong, if anybody is wrong about who he died for, then you are wrong about the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's how important this doctrine is. This is not some issue of semantics. All right? Um, now, you know, Larry made some incredible statements. I mean, uh, you know, Jesus, you know, God didn't love the Egyptians. He didn't love uh, the Hivites, the Girgashites, you know, the, the Jebusites. He didn't love them. Oh, is that, is that a fact? So, so if God didn't love the Egyptians, that would mean that no Egyptians are saved. Uh, because there certainly are uh, millions of Egyptians today, uh, Larry, living in Africa. Now, you're going to tell me that that whole country of Egyptians, since, you know, God didn't love the Egyptians in the Old Testament, well, well what happened? Did he start loving them in the New Testament? Um, you know, did, did, he, uh, did he find some more people to love in the New Testament? No, uh, it's absurd. I mean, he, he makes a blanket statement, and I'm quoting him, God didn't love the Egyptians. Um, that's ridiculous. Um, God not only loved the Egyptians, he died for the Egyptians. And, uh, you know, I, I, go tell some Egyptians today, uh, some Egyptian Christians that have uh, laid down their life for God, uh, because it takes a lot of that these days over in Egypt, especially a Muslim country, for those Egyptian Christians to say they don't love God and God doesn't love them. Uh, go ahead, go ahead, Larry, and tell, you know, go ahead and point me out some Egyptians that... Uh, you know, tell the country of Egypt that, that, that God doesn't love them at all because that's what you said. And, um, but, again, God so loved the world. Now, you know, when he quotes that scripture, he says it really disparagingly. He says it like he, he doesn't even want to quote that scripture. To see this entire four-hour debate without 10-minute interruptions, please go to Yahoo Video and type Larry Wessels in the Yahoo Video search box. Or go to iShoot Video 2 and look for this debate. Also, once on Yahoo Video, please reference to the six-hour video series on the biblical doctrine of predestination.